This is a replica of a human brain. And the front part of the brain, the frontal lobe, is not only critical for movement or motor functions or for talking, it's also critical for rational thinking, it's critical for uh, decision making, it is critical for your ambitions and goals in life. The back of the brain, the occipital lobe, is essential for vision, for seeing and interpreting what you see. And the side of this, called the temporal lobe, and this structure is critical for learning and memory formation. There's a key structure inside this temporal lobe called the hippocampus that is very susceptible to brain injury and stroke. In response to a brain injury, the cells within that structure, the hippocampus, they die. And that's one of the primary mechanisms for memory losses after a brain injury. As brain is about three pounds, but we don't feel the weight inside our head because it's floating inside a fluid with, uh, called cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. When I turn my head left or right, the brain slowly moves to left or right. If I move my head very quickly or I get a hit to the front of my head, skull, the brain is going to move fast and press against the skull, the front part of the skull. As a result, of this uh, pressing, the brain is going to shear. The shearing causes damage to these connections. And also the shearing is strong, that can also kill those brain cells. In using experimental models, we are examining the key changes that, are, that happen in response to a TBI. And we are targeting some of these changes, either to block or retard these um, neuronal losses or connections, loss of connections, with the hope that that will not only reduce brain damage, but will block the subsequent development of these uh, serious diseases that cause memory impairments. So what we do in the lab, we study how a concussive injury or a moderate to severe TBI triggers all these diseases. The idea is that if one could block the neurochemistry on the key molecules changing, that will not only de decrease the uh, loss, neural loss and acute symptoms, but hoping, we're hoping that will block the development of the subsequent diseases that take about 10 or 20 years after the initial trauma.